first you have to make a template for your little lantern, uh, depending on how big you want it. Uh, then you make it in an hexagonal shape, uh, so that it will uh, fit the design that you have chosen. Uh, it's not so easy to make this. You can see I make a circle and then a triangle, and then a triangle more, and after that I just uh, cut it out with a sharp knife. Yeah, and here you can see the final shape and uh, the markings are made for where the sticks are going to be. Yeah, and after transferring the templates to uh, some wood, I drill out the holes where the small sticks are going to be. And of course, uh, all in all, six small holes in the top and the bottom. Then I cut out the pieces, the small sticks I'm going to use. <clears throat> and again, uh, depending on how big you want the learn turn to be. So um, be careful that the sticks are uh, equal in length. I used uh, MDF uh, wood for the uh, top and the bottom and, and pine wood for the sticks. And here you can see it's all, including the little uh, uh, holder for the candle. Then I glue it together with some uh, special wood glue and um, made sure that uh, every thick stick had <clears throat> the same position and the length so that the lantern will be uh, equal. Yeah, and here I uh, glue on the stick for the candle holder. Uh, in a moment you'll see uh, how it works. Um, yeah, it has to be tight there. And remove all the glue. And then it fits down there, you can see. And the candle holder, I'll secure it that later. And this is how it works. You can pull it up and down. Very easy. And then I have to mount it uh, the top, including the candle holder stick. That's why there's a little hole in the top. You have to make sure that is. And now you can see how it functions. Yeah, very nice. Up, down. And now uh, how you make the screen. You buy some chewing bones from for dogs. I used the brown ones, they also came in, in white. After about 8 to 10 hours they have soaked in water, I take them up and you can see they are very uh, soft now. And uh, make some templates uh, for the screen. I made three uh, because I had to make three out of this uh, rawhide I bought. Just put it on and uh, cut it out. It's not so easy. It has to be a very sharp knife. And then I um, mark the sides where the sewing is going to be. I used a felt pen and an awl to make the uh, holes. Has to be small holes. And um, after that, I begin uh, sewing it together with some uh, waxed linen thread. It's the same thread I'm using for my leather works. And uh, again, uh, be careful not to rip it in part, apart, uh, so gently. Sew it together 
and uh, I choose to use cross stitching as I uh, also use on my leather works. Just have patience and uh, make the stitching uh, nice and fine. And uh, here I have uh, put the three together before I uh, close it, so it's going to be a round shape. Yeah, and I put in this, uh, these small sticks so that uh, if the screen will shrink, it won't hurt the frame of the uh, lantern. And that was actually a very good idea because uh, this material, the rawhide, actually shrinked a lot more than I have expected. As you can see later, uh, how much. But it's easy to uh, pull it over the frame now and you can finish it up. I recommend you to make your screen a little bit larger than I have done. At least higher so that it fits the lantern better uh, when it's dried up. Then you have to let it rest for about five to six hours, maybe uh, during the night in a warm place and the lantern will be finished. Here you can see it. I pulled this candle holder up, put in the candle and lighting it. And then push it down. Now I'm turning off the light so you can see it in my workshop. It's very cozy, you have a nice light. Hope you find this little demonstration interesting. And again, as I uh, used in the first lantern project, I bought some uh, dog bones and uh, let them soak in water for uh, some hours, uh, 10 to 12 hours. And when they are soaked, they are very soft. You can see here. And it's raw hide. So they are very easy to work with once they have uh, been uh, soaked in water. I decided to make another design. I thought I would make one that was more easy to make. So uh, I started measuring a bottle. I had an idea how big it should be, uh, 24 centimeters. And I just found out that I had enough there. And then I made uh, templates. I think templates are very um, important to make because then you have uh, you can better judge if uh, you uh, are doing the right way, I think. So a uh, template for both uh, making these lanterns and uh, leatherworks. And then I layer the template over the rawhide and um, cut it out with my with my knife. Yeah. And this time I only make uh, one that I only have to uh, sew it once. So I start making the markings where the stitches are going to be and I used an old template there's one centimeter uh, spacing between the markings the holes and after that I just punch the holes with this all
And then I begin uh, sewing it together. It is the exactly the same way when I'm uh, doing my leather works. I use uh, cross stitching. It's very important to uh, to make it right uh, at the beginning. You can see here first the one thread and then the other one. So it makes a cross. And again it can be a little bit difficult on this raw height because it's it can be very thick. So but here you can see uh, the cross stitching and then I take one of the threads and put it into uh, yeah the one that came out the other one I hope you can see it here the technique And again, on the outside, uh, they are crossed, and on the inside, they are not crossed. They are straight. And then at the end, make sure you have a lot of thread. Uh, <clears throat> Sometime I have a I don't have enough, so uh, it's a little bit difficult, but I finally got it with a knot. So, here you are, yeah. And then I took my bottle and uh, I came some uh, baking paper on it. I thought it would be easier to get it off. And now I'm going to make the, uh, the holder or the stand for the lantern. And first I make one here and approximately the same uh, diameter as the bottle of course. You see here the first one. You just sand it make it a little bit smoother so that it would look nice. And then I wanted to make it as uh, the other one I can make a candle inside it. So I changed this uh, the big one to a smaller one. And then I took the same piece of wood and drilled it out. Like this. My idea was that uh, I would only need to make one of these so you can see. Yeah. And uh, my design was to uh, make a bended uh, wooden a willow branch. I'll show you that later. So I had to measure it how uh, big the under layer should be. Here I just used the coin that I had. to make the shape. And again, very important to make a template. So you know what you're doing. And I, then I just had to uh, cut it out and uh, see if it had the right dimension. 
yeah, there's a stick is going to be on both sides. Then I transfer that to a piece of wood again. I use MDF uh, wood. I don't know if that's called in your country, but it's great to work in. And then I cut it out and sandpaper it again. The finish is very important for me. Uh, it has to be nice to hold on. To touch. And the machines does help me uh, do that faster. Yeah, you can see. And I just had to make the, the markings for the holes where the sticks are going to be. All the way I check several times, so I'm sure that it's uh, going to be as I want it. And then I drill the holes, approximately the same uh, dimension as the willow branch that I've chosen to use. Yeah. Again, check. Yeah. It fits nicely. Then the willow branch. You can see I'm measuring how much space there is between the two holes and um, marking it up on this uh, board. I wanted to have a branch that I could bend. So I made a template, or a, I don't want to call it scapulone, uh, that I could bend it around. And this will show you what I did. I tried it a couple of times before, so I knew uh, that this would work. Yeah. Again, checking the fitch. Then I use some nails. I found out during the process that the nails shouldn't have any heads on. So I used some that I cut off. But the first two here, you can see, had no heads on. And again, checking. Yeah. You can see here a nail with a head on. I removed all the heads so that the stick could come down and up without any problems. And then I tried to bend it first. Yeah, and I found out using a blowtorch or a heating uh, pistol, we call it here in Denmark, I could soften the wood and finally uh, get it bended without it, it was breaking. And uh, now you can see it's attached and then I just had to secure it and let it dry. And I let it dry uh, in a warm place for about uh, two days. Now I was finished and I thought, well, I could just uh, take this um, rawhide off, but <laughs> it was stuck very firm, so I couldn't remove it. I had to uh, destroy the bottle. And I had another problem because the rawhide didn't uh, stay in shape, so I have to make these two uh, out of wood so that uh, it could space the, you can see here, I put them inside. 
So that made it a little bit difficult, more difficult to to uh, to build this lantern. But I succeeded. You can see here, and these two rings are of course uh, holding the raw height in the right place. Now uh, after two days, and I color that uh, wood. It's time for putting it together. And as you can see here, after drying, it stays there. But uh, I used a rubber band so it wouldn't uh, move while I was working on it. Then I just had to find how big I want it to be, how high. So I'm figuring out approximately there. Checking, checking. And marking where. And for securing it, I did this. I used some wedges. First I make a little cut at the ends and made some small wedges. And also put a little glue on, just to be safe. And then Hammer it down. On both ends. And after that, I cut them off with a little saw and have to uh, apply some uh, paint again. It's actually uh, the same uh, paint that I use for my leatherworks. Leather color. Yeah. As you can see, uh, I made such a little thing at the chop uh, out of iron. I thought it would be great to have it uh, on so we could keep the screen in place, but you don't need to use that. You don't need to make such one, but because the the screen are actually uh, holding in very nicely. And then I can put in the candle and light it up. Yeah. And then I have a finished lantern. Hope you like. Other tools, I bought some uh, chewing bones from dogs and let them soak in water for about 10 to uh, 12 hours. And then I had a pot, flower pot, I would use some uh, as a template, uh, as a form. I'll show you here how I made my templates. Uh, just put a piece of paper or uh, cardboard around it, secure it with tape. And then you decide how big you want your uh, screen to be. I use this wooden block so that the, the size will be uh, equal all the way around. Just make two. Like this. Yeah. And then I make one of these to make it a straight line. This is very important. Yeah, and then you have it. And just take it off and uh, cut it out with a scissor. And the reason why I used a, a, a conical form shape was because uh, the 
bottle. I couldn't get it off, so I thought, well, conical shape, uh, I can always uh, remove it without uh, any problems there. This way, just be careful. And when you're finished, you can remove the, the extra paper you have. You don't going to need that. And then uh, you have to yeah, first you have to check, of course, check again, again. And I chose to make it in. Uh, three sections. So I had to find a way I could di divide this uh, template up in three uh, sections. First I measure it and then yeah, again very important to do it right. Then I find out what is three and just mark it three times. On both sides. And then I divided it first with the Open. You can see, and I number it one, two, and three, so I know uh, how it's going to be uh, assembled. And after that, I transfer it to uh, the the raw height. And uh, here I have the three. Uh, pieces are cut out and uh, marked where the stitch is going to be, just like in my other videos. And after stitching it, uh, the three sides together, of course I have to uh, sew the last part so it's going to be round. And again, I use cross stitching. I think that looks nice. And then, yeah, took the pot again. See if it fits. Yeah. And then I let it dry there. And uh, a reason why I use this uh, conical pot is because then it won't be stuck. During the drying process, I did this a couple of times so that it got stuck on the uh, templates or the pots and when it was dry I measured it around at the bottom and actually also at the top. I'm going to make my stain for it. Now you can see it's dry but again it doesn't keep the shape so I had to make uh, two rings, one at the top and one at the bottom. And that was not a part of my plan, but I had to do that. Here you can see uh, they are glued in and uh, colored with my leather dye. And then I made a platform for it. Yeah, and here you can see the platform is finished. And I have three holes uh, for the sticks and this arrangement so I can put the candle in here. Yeah and just secure it down here, like I showed in my video. And then I just had to uh, get my uh, sticks, my branches from Willow, and uh, adjust them so they could fit down in the holes. And I glue them onto the platform, and now I just put the screen on. Of course it fits nicely and yeah put them together at the top. And I used a uh, natural cartridge to uh, bind them together.
tight, of course. And at uh, the first I uh, used a little, uh, you see a little ball, a little pearl here, but I changed that for the Thor's hammer. And now I'm going to try to light it up for the first time using a candle. It's already very exciting to uh, the first time to see how the lamp, the lantern is uh, performing. Up there, there, there you are, my little lantern. I think it's a very uh, nice little lantern. I love it very much. It's very uh, primitive and old school. Here you can see, yeah, 